data for um, not this upcoming week but the next week which will show them how to put their items in so if you're not familiar with how the agenda happens collectively whenever you all discuss something or the department heads come up with something that needs your approval all those things kind of go in the hopper over a two-week process and then whatever department it's assigned to they start with that cover sheet that you see in your agenda getting together documentation that's required working with the attorneys on the contracts we all work together with mr pritchard on all of that and that's how those items happen organically so with the paperless agenda system we have with civic clerk there's a little bit of a change to that because everything's electronic and for ever all they've known is moving those papers around so we've got to train them on that but then and then there'll be a in-house training that we'll do for you so by the end of march we should be good to go um, with that um, along with technology improvements though we also have if you remember when you all approved the new website several years ago um, with that contract came a rewrite of our website after five years so we have completed um, the style reformatting of that. They're in the process of moving all the data over and just updating some data, but I actually have it here, and I'll email you all this link so that you can take a look at it. But um, this is the, the new website. Um, there's two things. We increased our navigation, so what we did was we tried to put it into a format that there was a lot more information accessible to citizens when you just clicked on that home page. You know, it's sometimes hard to dig around and find what you're looking for when you don't know exactly what it's called. So we looked at the analytics on the back side of our page and tried to bring all those things to the top so it's much easier for people to find. Um, this calendar functions better. We'll be able to put photographs about recent events and control this this will actually work as a carousel so we can put as many of these up as we would like and people can just scroll across and then the links so we've changed the color scheme just a little bit the one thing that we did hold on to were the graphic buttons that every customer that civic plus has wants our graphic buttons and they say to them no that's that was Lance county's baby and we can do something similar but you can't have theirs <laughs> yeah exactly um, there's other two um, great features that we have here. We have expanded um, animal services as a department header, so we'll be able to put more interactive information there with them to include um, re reporting dog bites. We're seeing a lot, a huge uptick with our dangerous dog problems. Um, uh, also, how they can make donations and support the shelter after hours. We get some confusion through 911. People call the shelter when they see it stray dog on Old Clyteville Road at 3 o'clock in the morning and they don't understand why we don't call someone in after hours to come and look for the dog that may or may not have been there to begin with and that you'll never find. So also open records. We get a lot of open records related to animal cases. Either it's a bite and people need the reports for their insurance purposes or they drop an animal off at the shelter and they want to know what happened to it and those types of things. So we've tried to make that easier there. Then the other fantastic thing that I'm most excited about is we've worked with the Sheriff's Office. If any of you have ever been to the Sheriff's current site, it's something that was built to be informational on the front end to the public, but really there's a lot that goes on the back end that has to do with managing their records. That was really the purpose of that website. So we built a department header for them that has bond information, citation information, <coughs> driver history, um, background check info, um, the online payments, information on probation, employment, crime awareness, sex offender registry, which we're required to list online. Um, but basically, we worked with them to say, what, what, what makes your phones ring? What could we put online that might cut down on some of that so that you guys can work on other things that are more important? Um, there will also be the same information carousel there for us to populate with the sheriff's safety message or if there's a particular crime that's occurring in a particular time for instance around the holidays you want to encourage people to not leave packages in their back seat and to lock their car at night stuff like that um areas of neighborhood crime things like that one thing you can put on there that'll de decrease calls during rainy weather is don't call me when your road needs to be graded because we can't grade roads in the rain yeah exactly no exactly you're right um, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and, and it also breaks down his division so that now there'll be a better explanation of who people need to call for what complaint. That's a big thing that, that they get there. So, um, and they we will also be launching an app. They're working on our app right now in the App Store. So we'll be launching an app um, in accordance with this. So we're excited about that. I'm gonna, yeah, I see it say firearm permit. Mm -hmm. So you can do that on it as well. So what they'll have is the information on where to go. So they won't be able to do it online because by law you have to go into the probate court to initiate that process. But the sheriff's office gets a lot of calls for that and they don't have anything to do with it other than fingerprinting. So they we can have the fingerprint information there, but to let people know that they've got to go to the probate court to initiate the process. Do we have an app where a citizen if they see something they can report? So we have a we have a notification on our front page as a part of this website where people can do that. Um, there's other programs for that. They just people don't use them a lot. Um, I've looked at the um, analytics on some of the other local <coughs> governments here locally that have those types. I get a lot of calls from vendors trying to convince us that we need that, um, and we're dealing with the same citizen base from a character standpoint. So I have told some of those vendors that if you can show me the numbers of where that's being utilized here locally with some of these other programs, then have, we absolutely want to get on that train and be a part we of that. We talked about that a while back. Yeah, but people just don't. Um, there's one particular local government that I think that their departments use it as much as, um, or more, much more than the citizens do. Um, and also, <clears throat> as a part of this, and you can't see on the front side, but for the first time, we have been able to have an employee intranet. So all some of the health insurance information we talked about yesterday, the wellness information, um, how they, um, their W-2 information or change of status, all of those things that people might have to walk into the HR department, they'll be able to do uh, with fillable forms online. And this is extremely helpful to our employees who don't work close to our building or who work shift work because they can take care of that during, during their work hours instead of having to come in during regular business hours. I was going to say, there is a software out there, I know the city has, and, and to be honest with you, it, it's, it's very efficient. Uh, it, it can be problems from some time, mainly because when you see uh, problems submitted in, it, it puts a time stamp in a date, and so as, as the date tagged by, it shows whether the issue was addressed or not. And so if you're in that department, you're sweating bullets, in a yeah, sense, trying to get it down, and, uh, to to get it down you know. Um, and, and in some cases, uh, the funding might be there. In some cases, it might not be there. But <laughs> nevertheless, everybody can see it. And um, so it's, it's, it's well, an interesting thing, but it, it yeah. really... I mean, Paige, you provided a lot of information there, but I, you know, along those same lines, I, I have felt like that, that a useful tool on the website for the citizens would be something very much along those lines. For example, if you saw a pothole, uh, if you could just, I mean, if the technology was there to where you could snap a picture of it, and at the same time, it would give you the GPS coordinates to know exactly where that pothole is, that would be beneficial to public works as well. Uh, rather than having to read a text or an email about it's over here, there, there, and most people don't even know where they're at to start with, but but I also understand that that putting something in place like that without under, without knowing again what the results are going to be and the benefits are going to be, that's the difficult part. So you're doing what you need to do from the standpoint of researching it, getting these folks to show you how that data is being used and how that tool is producing the data that will be beneficial to the county as well because you spend multi-thousands of dollars for that piece of software to do that and we've got a half a dozen citizens use it over a year. I mean, we, you know, it's not worth it. It's not worth that. Well, one of the difficult things is that once you provide an amenity, it's really hard to take it away. Sure. So, that, that's what once you do it, it's hard to quit if it's not. Yeah, and it's like we said earlier, and I think, Mr. Marshall, you're saying the same thing is that that tool has seemed like it's been more beneficial to staff than it really has to the public, more than anything else. It, it, it you, all of good as when you, everybody can see it, but if something comes in, say we're going to send one to the public works, 
Every official in here can see it. <laughs> Every department can see it. And they can see just how long it's been there, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, but it does provide the option where you can say, hey, uh, pending uh, slash uh, uh, parts to be ordered, something like that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, I can see the benefit of it. But if, if you're not prepared to do that, uh, not say rapid response, or if you get triggered by seeing a work order up there with your name mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. all the time it can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. So you think the sometime next month that we'll have a training, and do we have intentions to have a maybe even a, a, an open public training meeting that just kind of goes through a simple process of showing the, the new benefits of the website? And we we can absolutely do that. We can do it at a work session if you like, for sure. Or we can yeah, have I mean, some after meetings that we can do whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only other thing that I've been struggling with, and I, I think you and I talked about it, was just internally, kind of on a little side note, is, is keeping up with, with events and what's going on, and uh, maybe nobody else has trouble with that, but I just can't keep up with everything that, that, that hits the cow. Oh, him, he goes to everything. I, well, I know, you know I, usually, I usually do. And I don't go to everything either. But I, I had just yeah, thought it was all. Man, 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 it was Look at periodically and not you know, have to all take it off of an email and put it in your calendar. I mean, maybe that's just being lazy. I mean, they you they they but I was gonna say, it ain't lazy, cause it's confusing. You know, if I if I get, I mean, we get a lot of notifications that come in. I mean, you all get invitations to mm -hmm. different things, and I typically then I look on my calendar. Is that do I have a conflict at that moment? I mean, is my calendar already say I have a conflict? Does that make it easier for Belinda well, but, to just put it on a calendar and well, it's our responsibility versus emails to everybody? What happens is that, and this is where we struggle sometimes, and Belinda does a tremendous amount of work, and she deserves all the credit in the world because I do not know any one person that can manage all of what you guys get invited to and what's involved in better than she does. But what makes it hard for us is that you all don't get invited to the same things. And it, sometimes it, it doesn't make sense how random it is. And so we sometimes we call and say, hey, I see that you invited the chairman and Commissioner Marshall, but what about the other commissioners? And they'll say, no, we only wanted to invite the chairman and Commissioner Marshall. <laughs> yeah. So then Belinda feels like that she has to be the bad guy if one of you guys say, calls. Sorry, you weren't invited. <laughs> so it's really hard to put things on a master calendar without it kind of... You're right. Um, Just go and see. If, if well, I get one that comes to me, and it it says Chairman Bill Slaughter, then that's the Bill Slaughter. Now, if it comes in there ask for the commission, then that includes everybody. That would yeah. hurt my feelings if you know I saw something that said the chairman and Clay are invited to this. Really? Oh, I'm you know, I, Ooh, I, I like me. <laughs> no, Mark, you say I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> send you an email says, are y'all planning on going to this? I got to do so and so. Respond. Uh, yeah, I'm going. Uh, yeah, make make a, uh, make reservations for me mm -hmm. where <coughs> by the way, I forgot I can't go that day uh, and I, I let you know the day I'm supposed to be there or the day before I'm supposed to be there. If we do that, and we don't have the time to get the money back, we pay for a day. Nobody's griping and bitching about it. I don't mean to say that. I'm just saying that information flows both ways. Yeah, you're right. <coughs> the uh, field of the moody events out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not open to everybody. I <clears throat> but I was particularly interested in this homecoming when these troops just came in. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be something pretty cool to go to, mm -hmm. to see that. Mm -hmm. 
Was that available to us? Um, I got an invitation. Well, no, I take that back. I did not get it. I was aware of it. And there's some of them that I have been able to go to. I've got a base pass, so I can go on to the base. And so if there's something that I can do. Now, a lot of times from, um, uh, from the um, from the folks out there, public information officer out there, again, if, if I get an e-invite, that's an e-invite to me. If you get it, then it's an invite to you. Um, so I answer it. As soon as I know that I'll be able to go, I, for their benefit, I'll answer it, do it. It's all electronically, and they know I'm coming. Exit. A lot of that is done, a lot of that stuff that you see about the homecoming comes through red carpet. Uh, you can contact red carpet and see if it's possible to get on, if there is such a thing as an invitation list that they have. Uh, a lot of your red carpet participants are the ones that actually carry that. And keep in mind, a lot of those homecoming things, that's not really public information yeah. that they put out there. They will let, they don't even let the families know. They let, they'll tell them we're coming in between this time, but they don't even let them know that they're going to be there until 24 hours in advance, that they're that they're going to land at Moody. And a lot of times that will change because the last, we that. had one that I couldn't make a week or so ago, but whenever I first got the, the update from Public Affairs, they said, we got this group coming in on Thursday and this group is going to be leaving the day before. Well, the group leaving the day before left on Thursday and the group coming in on Thursday didn't come until Friday. So, I'll give you another scenario. I was, uh, and, I, and I was told about the type thing and how tight that the military is on that coming and going of their troops. Uh, there was an airman that was coming home. I mean, they're, they're, his group was coming home. He emails his wife, said, I'm going to be coming home on this day. She goes out to Facebook and says, my husband finally is going to be home on this day. Military saw it and held them over somewhere else for three more days because they don't want that message out that there's, for example, an aircraft coming in that's loaded down with these folks that just came from overseas wherever their, their mission was at. So, I mean, that, that information doesn't come out. Yeah. Access, very to, right. access to that very Access to the base is determined by the wing commander. Correct. There had been previous wing commanders that when you got elected, you got a courtesy invitation, I mean pass, to get off base. Another wing commander came in, nobody gets access. Uh, you, if I want you on the base, I'll let you know. Otherwise, you don't have access to it. And to varying degrees between those two is what we deal with. We'll have a new wing commander coming in July. July. Um, and what we've been accustomed to for those of us who go on the base on a regular basis for the P4 initiative meeting when it's held at the base, um, <clears throat> then we have to get a pass to allow us on there. Sometimes they say, okay, I'm going to give you a blanket pass here, um, and then others, no, it's only for this one thing. I was just curious. I spent enough time on military bases when I was in the Navy, so I was just curious how the procedure was. Yeah, it, it's, it, it, to start with, it's very private, and, and they invite people on the base um, that, that it's of their choosing. Um, you go out there and start inquiring about wanting to get on that base, you might not get them back for a long time. <laughs> That's the process. <clears throat> we'll take a break. We'll take a break. Sounds good.